So at this point, uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Kevin Moore. Kevin is a product manager at Google for Flutter and Dart, where he works on compilers, build tools, and libraries to support the web. He's helped create some core as well as some obscure Dart packages. Prior to Google, Kevin owned a software consulting firm, and before that, he was a program manager at Microsoft. So let's give a warm Flutter NYC welcome to Kevin Moore. Um, <laughs> my name is uh, Kevin Moore. Again, I work on the Dart team. Um, so just some ground rules, kind of how we're going to do things. Um, I work on web things, so I'll get into that in a little bit. I'm going to talk, well, I guess we'll see how long it goes, maybe 30 minutes, um, about mostly Flutter Web and some context behind that, um, things I work on on the Dart team. Um, then we'll take a short break to rejigger, and then Tim and I will do kind of an AMA, probably, you know, anything related to Flutter and Dart, you know. Um, if you want to know some good dad jokes, you know, we're also happy to help. Um, <laughs> So that's the plan for tonight. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Kev Moo everywhere, Twitter, GitHub, and at Google. Um, you're going to find me. I've been on the Dart team for about five and a half years now. I just did the math. Um, and from the beginning, doing a lot of focus on web stuff. I um, also helped out with the build system. I, run, I do a bunch of packages. i um, to talk about that. And before Google, just some interesting superlatives. I, I, although I think it's almost first. So it was a, a, a GDE, if you guys know that program. It's a great program if you're really into Google Dart stuff. Um, uh, Google has a great developer expert program. I think I was one of the first external contributors. I looked back and found my commit from March 18th. Um, and I was one of the first non-Google people to get paid to write Dart code. So if you like pop -up, if you like Minesweeper and you want to play not using Flutter at all, but you know, just kind of showing how uh, long we've been doing web and Dart, um, you can go play this pop-up win game, which is basically Minesweeper with darts and balloons, because I work on Dart. Um, so I forgot to add the agenda slide, but I'll give you kind of a hint. I'm going to talk about some background about where Flutter and Dart have come from. And this, this will come around when I get to talking about um, Flutter and the web at the end of my talk. Um, a little bit of Flutter and some context around Flutter and Dart to understand how we implemented Flutter Web. We'll talk about Flutter Web. I'll show some demos. Um, and then, Tim, if you have questions about those things, we can talk at the end. Um, there might be a couple sp spots in here where I show an uh, architecture diagram, and I'll ask to make sure kind of people understand the story there. Um, so again, when I joined Google and when I started working on Chrome, um, when I started working on Dart stuff, early 2010s, you remember those days? Um, oh. Sometimes I miss. Um, so Chrome was working on a bunch of crazy things. Um, has anyone heard of any of these things? Chrome apps, at least, right? Yeah. Pinnacle, anyone heard of Knackle or Pinnacle? Remember those? Speedy, heard of that? Quick? Um, this, it's, it's crazy, I remember the time just being blown away um, at the investments and things that Chrome was doing. And obviously there's, there's good reasons to worry about you know, browser monocultures and, you know, the, the diversity of technology on the web. I totally support those discussions. Um, but for me, at least, and being kind of a proud Googler, um, realizing the impact that has happened, you know, from some of these crazy experiments. So all these things, you know, none of them kind of exist as they are now. But you think about the evolution, right? Chrome Apps is, you know, inspired work on things like service workers and PWA. Uh, the pinnacle work you know, push Mozilla to say, maybe we should do this all in JavaScript syntax. And then they got together and like, well, maybe we should, you know, formalize it a little bit better and not use JavaScript as assembly and formalize it. So now we have WebAssembly, which is super exciting. And obviously, speeding quick have turned into HTML2 and very soon HTML3. Um, so these audacious things that happen at Google, it's um, specifically on the Chrome team, um, have yielded some cool stuff. And, you know, remember when we, all of the logos and things are like that, and they were so hard to add drop shadows and blur and gradients to all the things, and we spent all the time learning it, and now it's all gone. So now we can all do drop shadows and gradients, and, like, and now it's flat again. Well, that's fine. Um, it looks super cool. 12-year-old me would like the old logo. Um, so there's two other things that some of you might know and some of you might not know. Um, there were early experiments in the 2010s around the DOM and the VM in Chrome as well. So there were experiments to figure out, could we make the DOM experience on the web way better by removing lots of stuff. How simple could we make things? Um, and there's another set of experiments by people on the V8 team, the JavaScript team, saying, you know, could we just skip all the bad stuff about JavaScript or what people perceived as bad stuff by creating a completely new language to put in the browser? And I'm sure you've, you know, if you know some of the history, where these technologies have gone. So neither of them are in the browser right now, um, ironically, or at least built into Chrome. Uh, 
you know, there might be some debate still about a few people on my team in general, though, and it's personally my opinion. I'm so glad, you know, thank God for unanswered prayers, right? I'm so glad that Dart never ended up in the browser because I think the way we have now makes things so much easier and better, um, enabled such cool things. Um, but both these teams have left the Chrome work now, and uh, now we're working together, which is super crazy. Like, the whole loop we came um, from these aud audacious things that happened in Chrome back when we had crazy logos. So. We're all here for Flutter. We all know we know Flutter, right? Who's who has never written Flutter code? They're kind of here to learn. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, there was a day when I hadn't written Flutter or Dart either. You know, like it's good. You know, we'll change that today, hopefully. Um, so this is the stack of Flutter tech. Does this look kind of familiar? So at the base of Flutter is this engine. It's written in C++. You know, native. So Skia is the the thing that draws pixels. And it's actually the engine behind Chrome, ironically. Um, so the way Chrome is portable across all the different operating systems, it's the same way Flutter is, right? Draws Skia. The Dart virtual machine is there. So Dart is not just a programming language, but a whole set of tools, compilers, runtimes, uh, libraries that let you run code, and some text engine stuff. So this text bits and these Skia bits are really kind of what um, early Flutter folks were looking at. Like, how, how low can we get? So it turns out they got really low and started over. And now there's all this framework stuff in Flutter. And this is all written in Dart code. All the way down, the lowest level stuff. You know, Skia is like, you can kind of think of it like GL or like a layer above GL. Like it's very low level um, primitives. And all the stuff built on top is all Flutter. So all the layout stuff, rendering, all the widgets, it's all written in Dart. And then obviously, if you're writing a Flutter app, that's all in Dart code as well. So there's a big investment in Dart here. It's not just like a thin little stripping layer on top of Flutter, right? Uh, and if you want more details of kind of the story, watch my talk from I.O. in May as uh, we go a little bit deeper on this. And I'll come back to why this is interesting in a little bit. Although by itself, I think it's kind of cool to understand how it all works. So Dart. Um, most people have heard of Dart in the context of Flutter, although Dart has been around since well before Flutter. In fact, I, as I mentioned, um, I did a bunch of hacking on it uh, beforehand. It's a really great language. It's an object-oriented language. It tries to be functional in ways. Oh, oh, it's soundly typed. Um, it really is, you know, a good hybrid. I came from Microsoft, um, spent a number of years there, worked on .NET technology, C Sharp, and then I went and worked on a bunch of web tech that was all open source, Ruby and JavaScript. And I was like, there's some, there's a middle ground here, right, between all the ceremony in .NET and all the kind of loosey goosey duct typey stuff. And um, I found Dart, and it's like, oh yes, this is the middle ground. I always wanted like a little bit of ceremony. I want some privacy. I want some control, um, without public static void main. You know, and there's good reasons for all those words to exist. Um, but in terms of getting started, like I find for me, Dart is a great middle ground. And so this is some interesting context. Again, if you haven't dug too deeply into what Flutter does, and and hopefully today I can spend a little bit of time going a little bit deeper um, than some of just the basic introduction content. So. How does Dart work fundamentally? So has anyone here taken a compiler class or a VM class? A Little bit, okay. It's actually kind of cool how it all works, right? And so I'll walk through this. It looks scary, but it's pretty cool and pretty straightforward, at least I think. I've worked on the team a while. Um, so at some point you have a Dart file, Dart source code, for your Flutter app or whatever you're writing. It could be a G Cloud function now. We'd cloud run, you could write a function in, in Dart. It's just a piece of text. And so what we do is we lex it and parse it. So we turn it into an AST. Um, some arbitrary, you know, symbols. Um, wait, it's abstract symbol tree, syntax tree, syntax. I got that wrong at I/O too. You think I've learned by now? And so we turn it into this little module called a kernel. And so, kind of think of it like a bytecode in a way. Um, and what we can do with that is we can do all the things that the Dart language gives you. And so we can do type inference. Who likes using var instead of typing everything, right? Like. We can infer all that stuff for you. So we do inference, we do type checking, um, we do a bunch of optimizations. And we get to a format that's pretty compact, we know that it's sound and safe, and we hand it over to our backends. And that's kind of core to how we can support all the things we do, and I'll talk about that in a bit. And then we have these things on the right that actually is a separate stack that's meant to handle imperfect code or broken code. This is what lets you actually find the red squiggles and gives you hints and doesn't crash You know, when you have half a statement done. That's the stuff in green. And the analyzer um, package itself, this bottom box, is actually a package. And so if you want to write Dart code that processes Dart code, we have that thing. And I've done a bunch of it with build tools. So if you're curious about doing fun build things in Dart, talk to me after. I spend a lot of my free time, what little I have, on that stuff. 
Um, but this is kind of the stack of like the Dart engine. And where this matters, again, I'm come around with Flutter and the web, we have, we offer a crazy set of tools here. So if you've done Flutter development before, you've partied on this top line, okay? So when you're developing, we have a JIT, a just-in-time compiler. So we basically, how fast can we go from source code to running code on your emulator, on your device, in dev mode? We want to go super fast. So, and what JIT means, at least on Android, is that it's just in time. So as you run the program, we get, get smart, we see how your code is running, and we can actually optimize it and make it faster. Um, and then the VM is things like the garbage collector, um, runtime system, that kind of stuff. So that's all built on the front end. Now the reason the lightning bolt's there is all these features, because we have the runtime system and the JIT, we can understand a lot about what's happening at runtime, and so we can support things like hot reload and deep inspection. Um, and I'll show some of that in a little bit. Then obviously when you deploy, it's not about you as a developer getting it running as fast as possible, it's how can I make the smallest, fastest binary for my user? And if that means I have to sit a while as a developer to build my release build, that's okay. So you wanna have a mode um, on the left where it's as fast as possible developer, like let me see pixels, I made a change, let me see pixels. And so we nail that. Then we go to production and give to your users, I'll wait you know, tens of seconds, maybe a minute, whatever, if that means my binary size is small and my users have a really fast experience. And we do both, which is kind of crazy. Um, and now just multiply again for the web. So as I mentioned, I've been doing Dart stuff well before there was Flutter. Um, our original customers were web customers. Uh, in fact, um, Angular Dart, which is open source now, it's very focused internally, so we might not fix your favorite bugs, but you can go play with it and use it, um, and, and some people really like it. Um, that runs Google Ads, one of, you know, and as you know, Google makes a little bit of money in the ads business. If you buy and sell ads on Google Ads, you're using a Dart application. So we've been doing web for a long time. And we have is, kind of amazingly, and this is enabled by our front end, is we have a good dev experience on the web. It's something we call the dev compiler. So we can do hot reloading, um, incremental compilation, super, super fast, give you a good dev experience. I'll demonstrate that in a bit. And then same thing. When you go to production, it'll take a while because we'll do global analysis through all your code. We'll figure out what you don't use. We'll inline. Um, I just corrected someone today on our PM team who should know better. Um, they're like, oh, it's a transpiler, right? I'm like, no, it is a compiler. We do not treat it there are other languages that I won't mention um, that do kind of a cursory pass over uh, to generate JavaScript. We're a proper compiler. And so things like loop unwinding and inlining, um, constant evaluation and collapsing, um, it really is a compilation target. We treat JavaScript like a compilation target. And the idea there is to, again, get you small app, it's the exact same story, small app binary, fast loading, consistent performance. And it's kind of crazy that we do four things. Like these are actually four compiler stacks we have. But again, as I mentioned before, just for the context, the front end lets us do a lot of this. So we spent a lot of time making sure that we had shared as much as possible. And so tricks we do to make efficient native ARM code are the same tricks we can use in many ways to give you really fast, small JavaScript. Cool, questions about any of that so far? Just psh, I know it's a fire hose, and I talk fast. I'm trying to actually go slow. Um, but it is really kind of exciting. We, we went through this big refactoring over the last two years to really enable this, and to see where we've gotten and how fast we can go is pretty exciting. And what's also exciting about this model is, for a long time, if we wanted to add a language feature, we had to go add it to our VM, and then add it to our analyzer tool, and then go add it to our JavaScript compiler. And now we're in a spot for a lot of things, we can share a lot of that work. And so, some of you might have heard, you know, we're talking about non-null by default in Dart, adding extension methods, um, a lot of that work, um, it's not trivial, it's still hard work, but it's really been accelerated because we have this common infrastructure. And this is open source, and the whole front end is written in Dart, so if you are curious and you're a language person, uh, go check it out, it's pretty cool. So, backing up a bit, the web. I'm so glad these emojis exist. You don't have to go looking for font, you know, icons anymore, just the emoji. Um, I love the web, who's a fan of the web here? I really love the internet. Um, and again, I talked about this a little bit IO, like, you know, the fact that I've worked at Microsoft for a long time, like you have to go install Office and it costs how many hundreds of dollars or whatever and you know, install the app and patch it. Like Google Docs is just has a paradigm shift. Google Maps, like, you know, just blows your mind. Google Earth now, like um, the web is really powerful. Um, but there is some debate about what it really means to be web and I, this is mostly my opinion here. Um, but it matters as we talk about what we're doing on the web with Flutter. So some people would claim that this is the web. Um, and I kind of have a question mark, right? 
So if you're going, to, if you're learning HTML, and this is one of those great things, right? Like we all, I think many of us that have done web, who, who would consider themselves web programmers, at least partially, maybe a previous life, right? Um, the fact that you could do this and understand it this way, like teaching people the web, it was great. Um, and similar things with CSS and JavaScript, right? You can start really simply. Um, but some claim that if your web page doesn't look like this, or some you know maybe very simple expansion of this, you're not really the web. And to which I say, forget about what we're doing at Google or whatever else. Like, look at any big web app or complex web experience. You do view source. It is. It might as well be assembly. It might as well be the matrix. Like, if you format it and look at it right, like. You know, we build lots of high-level tools. This is how you build application experiences, right? And so, um, you know, many tools for many years now have basically treated HTML, CSS, JavaScript as compilation targets. So we're using SAS for CSS, whether using TypeScript for JavaScript. You know, the number of frameworks and things that exist for HTML. And this is useful. And I think it's important, especially for people learning. Um, these concepts matter at some level. But for me, what when I really think of the web, I think of this. This is a little bit dated, although I think we talked about it at I.O. five years ago. Um, but I like thinking about this when I think about web. A slice. Um, secure, linkable, indexable, composable, ephemeral. I don't think I have to ex explain too many, but you know, the secure idea is not just TLS. I mean, that's important that we have HTTPS. It's that I can open up two tabs and run two apps from two different companies, and modulo you know, weird plugins or browser bugs, like, they're completely isolated. Like, they're in a sandbox. They're linkable. I can just send you a link to go look at a thing. And you can open it, which is great. Like, people lose track of how great links are, right? You can, you know, whether it's a document or a picture or a video, just links. Indexable, which means I can search for it. Um, composable means I can put things together well. You know, I can put in iframes or components from other people, bring in content from other places. And ephemeral, I think, kind of goes along with secure, but it just goes away, and it's just cached. It goes away. And I think another thing, putting you in here is tough, but updatable, right, which kind of goes with a ephemeral. Like, I can just hit reload to get the new version, which is amazing. The days when you had to, like, install service packs for your editor, so, you know, or your map software, like, you just hit reload. It's, and so I don't want to, I'm belabored this for a reason, because as we think about bringing Flutter to the web, this is the set of stuff I'm, as a product person, really worried about. This is the, the flavor of the web I care about. So as you may have heard, um, we're doing work to bring Flutter to the web, which I've been working on for about a year now, nine months. Um, and I'm so amazed about how far we've gotten here. So this is where you go to learn more. Um, so if you remember nothing else in this talk, this would be the place. And so you might ask, how did you pull this off? Um, it was more straightforward than you think, I and mean, this is a, a this is a tricky thing to do with slides. So it's not quite this trivial, but it really was basically this straightforward. That's how we did it. So one more time, before, after, before. Um, that's really what we did. So, and again, if you've done any Flutter development, and if you're about to, just go look. There's a library called Dark colon UI. You might have seen it. On the, in the native world, that maps down to Skia and the Dart VM and text. On the web world, that maps down to browser things, Canvas and DOM elements. And what's exciting, and I kind of talked about this before, so your whole app is written in Dart. The whole Flutter framework is written in Dart. We take all that stuff, and Dart UI is written in Dart. And just instead of pointing to Skia APIs, it points to Canvas and DOM and other things. We take all that Dart code, and we ship it through our JavaScript compiler stack that we've been using at Google for over half a decade to build crazy important apps. And so we can give you an amazing dev experience on the web, and we can give you amazing, fast, beautiful production experiences on the web. Um, it's that simple. Simple. And then another fun just thing to bring up is like, so you see Canvas and DOM here. On Chrome, what are those de sugar down to? Skia. So it's actually kind of funny, we joke about this a little bit, because Skia, obviously, there's no browser API for Skia. In a lot of ways, we're just trying to like poke holes through the browser, what the browser gives us, to get back to mom. Because like Skia is really what we want, um, and it's all there, so at least the features are there. And we are actually having conversation with the Chrome team to see if there are reasonable things to evolve browser API so that we get access to more low-level things. Um, WebGL is a great example of this, right? Like, and then you can compile crazy 3D apps to the web. And so we're talking about some of those things right now. So enough of me yapping philosophical. I had to pad a little bit before getting to demos. Um, let's see how some of this stuff works. Cool? All right. So, okay, what is this? 
This is a Dart project. It's Dart code. It looks like Flutter code, right? And for the most part, it is, except that somewhere in here, I'm using package Flutter web instead of package Flutter. And so if you don't know any Flutter, it'll make sense later. You're fine. And if you do know Flutter, that really is the only difference. And so let's run this. I'm getting as much mileage as I can out of this. This is the, the demo that Tim gave at Flutter Live. This is what I worked on basically all of December. Um, it's a tile game. Have you guys ever played this, the 15 tile game? So you try to get all the numbers in order. I'm going to solve it all for you right now. I won't. But you see how it wins. And so we have fun transitions here. So of course, Seattle in the background. Um, this is one done by my friend Robbie. It's like, this is beautiful. At least in my, in my humble opinion. Um, I didn't do the design, so I can say that. I just, Will helped me with some of this. Um, the designers did a great job. So, you know, if you haven't played with Flutter much, or like, you know, if you have buttons and you switch layouts and you drastically change the theme, they'll actually animate like between. It's like rounded to like the corners and it animates in. Like it's, and this is like running in the dev compiler. So, like, let's drill in a little bit and see how it works. Does that sound cool? First, like, it just, it's just, it's just so cool to see this all running. I did all the development on this on a native device, and the first time I got it running on the web, I was like, you've got to be kidding me, and I danced around. and Because um, that's what I do, I get excited, it's fun stuff. So, I talked about all that context up front, let's get some, let's understand why. So I'm going to reload the app. So this is running on my machine locally on my dev server. So this is that, you know that room of the diagram, is like the dev stuff on the left, and your left and the production stuff on the right. So this is the dev compiler. And so if I just reload this, you know the network panel, you'll see all these JavaScript files. And so you'll see things like clipboard and priority queue and Dart SDK. These are all the individual components that we compiled for. And so what we do is it's kind of at a package slash library boundary. Um, we try to be smart about it. And so we, what we do is our compiler can run incrementally. It kind of globs things together. Again, mostly at a package boundary. And says, I'll make one glob of JavaScript for this. And if you look at the code, if you look at the code, there we go. It's JavaScript, but it's Dartish. You can actually, okay, you know, I have setters and getters, methods. DDC, is our dev compiler is what we call it. We actually try to make relatively readable JavaScript as well. Um, we can do better than just readable JavaScript, it's pretty good. And what's cool about how we modeled this is, since we have a static type system, a sound static type system, we understand not only if you've made a change to what file, we understand the impact of that change. So let me close this up here and clear out my history. And let me go into the source code. And I'm just gonna go, just to keep everything visible. So you see there's Seattle here. I'm gonna go into, let's see, can I do this in a way? Just give me a second. There we go, that's a bit better. And I'll do this. If you wanna know the plugin I have for that, it's, it's nice. So there's Seattle, I'm gonna come in here and let's do P Pacific Northwest, why not? And hit save. And hit save, oh, there we go. So you see it reloaded right away. And you'll see the only JavaScript that came down was main, which is basically my app JavaScript. So it knew that I only changed my app code, all that framework code, and I'm using the provider package, and I'm using a couple other packages. None of that changed, so it only recompiled and then sent an event to the browser saying, reload that thing. Um, so this is not state full hot reload yet. You lose state, you notice we did a full reload. We actually aspire to, we'll see where we get to, it's, we have a design for it. Um, we think we might actually be able to do state full hot reload here, just like, um, native, using some of the same tricks. Um, but even that experience is, is super fast. So I can go back to, you know, Seattle. And boom, it reloads. So that's the compiler experience. I showed you a little bit of the, of the JavaScript here. Uh, let's see if we can do a little bit better. But actually, before we get into JavaScript, let's look at the DOM. So I talked a little bit before, you know, what is the web? Um, and you've heard my philosophy, this is where it's gonna become very apparent. Let me maximize a little bit here and increase the font size. So everything I'm gonna show you here is our current implementation. And this all might change, but I wanted to give you an idea of like what we're doing under the hood, like how do we pull this off? Um, so this might change next week, depending on what we do things, but I still think it's kind of interesting to show. And so 
we take over the whole DOM. We kind of assume we own it. We will have a model where you can put it in a, a div or an iframe, so you can kind of isolate things if you want to mix and match. But we have effectively, oh, and this is Hot Reload being weird. Just a second, see if this does the right thing. There we go. So we have a host, a glass pane, a scene host, a ruler host, and a glass pane. The scene host is all the things we're drawing. The glass pane basically captures all click events. Um, and it's also where accessibility hangs out. And the ruler pane is where we do some text measurement stuff. So first, I wish to show this because it's interesting. So Flutter does layout of text. It might size your widgets based on the text in them. So it needs to know how big things are. And if anyone spent any time with a Canvas API, you know getting information about the size of text and like the layout of the text with the kerning and the you know, formatting is really tough on the browser. So what we do is we actually go create an invisible layer and we render the text there. So this is a hidden little element with plaster in it. And we do that in a hidden layer. And then the browser helps us and we figure out the size. And then we can use that to figure out how to do layout. So this is the tricks under the covers. Now something actually to back up a little bit, how many of you worry about what GL is doing with textures when you run a Flutter app or like run Chrome? Some of you, if you're like, if you're really hardcore, you might care. Like I wonder what, what textures are being cached here. We're treating the DOM just like a rendering service. And so we're doing the things we need to do and we don't really expect you to view source here. So that's text measurement. Um, the glass pane is really boring. It just covers the screen, but it lets you, it makes, makes sure clicks don't go through. And the scene host is really interesting. So let me drill in here. You can do inspect, but you don't get very deep. Oops, not that one, this one. So inspect will just get you to the glass pane. So you kind of have to dig in manually. But if I dig in far enough, Not a picture clip, there we go. We're getting in deeper. I think it's this offset, it is. We're getting in deeper. <gasps> There's number one. And we get a little bit deeper here. So I talked about treating the whole DOM like a canvas, it really is. So we have all these FLT flutter. And so we do clips and we do offsets and we do transforms. But if you get down far enough within clips and transforms and offsets, of course, the really tough thing is, as I click on the app, it redraws. So I have to be very careful about that. We do one of two things. Okay, maybe one second here. Within a clip, within a clip. Within a picture. Where are you? Hit offset, here we go. So we have clips and clips and clips and canvases, and there we go. So clips make sense, right? Um, and all you get down to is a picture. And that really maps down to like effectively a texture we have in the native Flutter renderer. And then inside a picture, you either have a canvas or you have a DOM element. That is it. And then we either render the DOM as a paragraph tag, as you expect, or, and actually what's really fun about this, if I, if I get this just right. So this is, so I'm doing Flutter drawing commands, right? Rounded rectangle and drop shadow and everything else. And we just desugar it down to CSS. So cubic bezier and box shadow, like it's completely crazy, but we just treat it like a rendering error. And so whether we do canvas or whether we do DOM really comes down to what's most efficient. Do we know where we're gonna move things around um, a lot, or recycle things, can we compress things into one bitmap? We really treat it like a rendering layer. And that's how we treat the DOM. Um, and so don't worry about too much inspect here. What we give you instead is what you expect, dev tools. So this is really crazy. Um, I can go into select widget and click on a widget. Here's your inspector that if you know Flutter, you know well, because it's the inspector. So the way we do this is, you think the DOM tricks are crazy. Um, so we spin up our dev compiler in this thing called web dev, and we spin up a proxy that's the VM service protocol proxy. So the Dart VM has a service protocol that lets you look at stack traces and memory allocation. It's extensible, so that's the thing Flutter plugs into to talk about doing inspection. We proxy that using a combination of the Chrome debug protocol and some other hooks, and we produce the VM protocol. So we are pretending to be the Dart VM, the native Dart VM, even though this is all running in a browser with JavaScript and DOM. And so part of that is I can use an unmodified dev tools talking the normal DevTools protocol and click around my visual tree. 
and I can look at the layout builder and the elements here, right? So again, the DOM stuff is just render calls. You don't even think about it. Your widgets are gone by that point. But you can actually inspect the entire visual tree here um, using the tools you would already with Flutter, with Flutter Native. And so really what we're aspiring to do is give you the exact same dev experience on, na on the web as you have on Native. Even crazier is you can do things like debugging. So let me do this and let me say slide puzzle because all the code's here. And let me find one of these things. I wrote this kind of crazy little class that handles the animation of my widgets. I'll put a breakpoint in here and let me click to animate something. So this is the Dart source code, right? We're all with me here. This is Dart source code. I'm talking over the native debug VM protocol and I'm debugging the JavaScript. Now, what's crazy is I can actually come over here and open this up and go to the sources tab so I have source maps on here, right? So this is the Dart code using Chrome source maps. Let me go in, settings. Let me turn off JavaScript source maps. So here's the JavaScript. So I can be over here and step through my Dart code. And you'll notice it actually will run a few things. It'll actually step, step to step if one line of Dart code corresponds to many lines of JavaScript. Actually, it's still going, still going. I didn't practice this a lot, so I'm not sure, oh good, it stopped eventually. So when we talk about the same dev experience, we mean the same dev experience. So debugging, inspecting, all the things, it just works. Um, any other questions here? I feel like, given the audience, there's like, there's three of you who are like, oh my god, the rest are like, okay, how do I do Layout Builder again? So I wanna make sure I balance correctly. Go ahead. Uh, can you try this on like Firefox? And, uh, Safari or other browsers? Yeah. Great question. So the dev experience here is tied to the Chrome debug protocol, just because that's the one we're, we use a lot internally and we have ex expertise in. Um, so when you publish to web, we generate JavaScript that runs everywhere. They run Edge, Safari, Firefox. There's some issues now we know about. Those are our targets. On the dev experience side, um, actually running with the dev compiler, Firefox and Chrome, absolutely. Safari, there's a couple issues we're digging through. Actually, in some cases, Edge works fine. Um, insofar as folks use the standard protocol, um, it'll work. Like, there actually is some movement around having a more standardized browser debug protocol. Um, but for right now, it's focused on Chrome. But the application will work on yeah, it, I can Yeah, I can open up in Safari and Chrome, and it works great. Um, other questions? So this is stuff we're still working on here. Um, but the idea of like treating the web like another platform is kind of insane. And I, I'm, I'm super excited that this is working for us. Um, and honestly, I think, and anyone who's had to deal with installing Android Studio or updating Xcode, it can be daunting. Like, once you install the Flutter SDK, you'll just have the tools. Like, you already have a browser, you're good to go. Um, so I think, even if people do native development and never do a web app, um, or do a web app at last, I think a lot of folks, their first experience with Flutter will be on the web-based thing. In fact, Actually, I'm not gonna browse to it now. We have code labs up now, where in the browser, you can run through Flutter code lab, and you'd write the dark code in the browser, and we render it for you, because it's just the web. Um, and we compile it on a server. Uh, so it's, it's a really exciting thing for us. Um, so one thing I covered a little bit was that this code is different code. You know, I'm importing this other package, this Flutter web UI package. Um, we want to give you better than that. We want to give you one framework. So this is kind of our preview still. Um, I want to give you a sneak peek of kind of where we're going. So let me close this version and open this. So this is a normal Flutter app. And to show you, I will simulate it. Uh-oh. I can do it. OK. Um, so this is the native app running in the Android emulator and looking cool. Basically the same source code. Let me go into the console now and do So there you go. Same source base. Android web. And just to prove, because I understand how people are. I'm gonna go up to Seattle here, and I'm gonna go Pacific Northwest, save, 
you'll see I loaded there. We haven't quite wired this up yet, but I'm gonna do Shift R here. So it's, it's, it's coming. Okay, so hashtag caveats. If you're gonna play with this stuff now, this is only in head flutter. We're gonna put it behind some flags. We have not merged everything together yet. This is the start of our merge, not the end of our merge. And so if you wanna play with Flutter web, go to flutter.dev slash web, follow those instructions, you'll be much happier. Um, but this is to let you know we are on the path to getting this all converged and working together. Um, and this is where we're heading. There will be one Flutter and I can do run on Chrome, run on Android, run on iOS. Um, we'll support them all out of the box. And it's super exciting. Let me close this, let me close this, let me go back to slides. So futures, we're working on the merge right now. Um, and it's going really well, which is pretty cool. But as you can imagine, like there's, it's actually hilarious. There's one spot, I forget exactly why, in some of the code where we call exit in the code natively. And so that just kills your Dart process. And so I actually commented in the code, I'm like, what are we gonna do on the web here? Like, do we redirect you to like a 404 or to like notfound.com? Like, what's the equivalent of like killing your process on the web? Like, so there's a bunch of things like that. We have code that uses platform specific stuff. It says, is Android, is iOS. Um, we need to figure that out now. Cause like, is web? Well, maybe I mean, is Android on the web? And so you can't imagine, you know, if you go to the, pa the package site now, we have a Flutter button and a web button, and those are assumed to be mutually exclusive. They will cease to be mutually exclusive. So we're working on just a bunch of problems there. Um, be happy you don't have my job, but it is fun. So we're working on that. Text, as you can imagine, is also super gnarly, and we have some plans here, but just, it's crazy. Like, let me actually show an example. I think it's, it's worthy of breaking out. So I'm gonna go to, if you wanna play with the samples, by the way, this is where you go. Flutter.github.io slash samples. Um, we also link to flutter.dev slash web. So let me open up, where is this here? Go into this, the gallery app, material, text fields. So I'm gonna type in my name. So I can double click. That's not what happens in the web. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy actually, like this works, right? Um, but like we're giving you the Android affordances because we draw those, we render those. Um, you expect people to right click and do this stuff, right? But cut and paste isn't here because this is a canvas element. And so we have a plan for figuring this out, but it, as you can imagine, it's a little gnarly because sometimes it makes sense to render the text to a canvas um, and other times it makes sense to do it to DOM elements. And so, you know, people want accessibility to work. They want your auto form fill out password manager thing to work. Um, uh, you expect copy and paste to work, those things. We're, we're working on it. But those are kind of some of the gnarly ch challenges here. Because people also want, okay, I want this like input element to be like off-centered and rotating with a blur on it. And I also expect the context menu to work. It's like, okay, like we'll get on that. And thankfully, obviously the web has done a lot of work there with transitions and you know uh, transforms. Um, so we have all the atoms we need, just stuff we're working on. And it's, it's, it ends up being kind of a funny problem, honestly. Like really? I think I can do cut here and that works, but it's actually not in my clipboard. Yeah, <laughs> like, because it clicked the native button. So right now it's just funny. So keep this in mind too as you're playing, you know, these are the things we're working on. And then the stuff you expect, like plugins to work. And so what's great is the web has notions, notions of location or access to your camera or your audio. So like, you can imagine just a very parallel experience on the web. We need to go implement all those backends. We need to go make sure Flutter, Firebase is wired up same way the native ones are. And so we wanna get on that. We wanna make it easy for folks like you to build your plugins that work on the web. Yes, sir. Um, how hard is it to integrate other JavaScript elements, uh, other JavaScript, you know, how sometimes when you want to integrate something, they give you a JavaScript file and put it right Absolutely. here. Right. And then the ad. So the question is, how do we integrate with other web things, you know? Yeah. I talked about Slice, there was a Compose, right? So Dart has, Solid JS interop. Where was the gentleman I was talking to earlier? We know we have some issues. I'm working on fixing those now. Um, but we have a model where you can basically stub out in Dart and say JavaScript function here and then wire it up behind. There is a plugin model. I think we just landed the experimental version of this where you can say here is a here's a box that I wanted to render HTML and you can put HTML there. I have examples already of you know using iframes and wiring between those. So 
again, the analogs are interesting with native. You know, in some ways, you want exactly the same. What's really cool is, unlike Android iOS, you can actually write your JavaScript code, your integration code, in Dart, because we can call Dart to JavaScript. So you can actually have a pure Dart experience on the web for your plugins, and it just compiles to JavaScript. And what's great is then your plugin has 15 methods in it. You only call one. Our JavaScript compiler will only compile that one method and tree shake the rest, rest away. So, and in many ways, I'm excited. Like we'll have, you know, arguably, you know, there's back and forth, but like there's a lot of places where we'll have a better experience on the web just because of Dart can compile the web stuff. Um, so be patient with us here. Um, I, again, I'm, you know. Was it future future leaning statements or something? Like I'm not going to give dates, um, but we're cranking on this really hard now. Watch the GitHub repositories. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and we're excited for people to play with it. So this is thank you from me. Um, if you want to learn more, flutter.dev, dart.dev. We're going to do a reshuffle now, quick, for seating, and then we'll get into the Q and A. Cool. Thank you much.